Hi, welcome to Moo Moo Math. Today we are going to learn about how to graph trig functions and we're going to look specifically at the change in the period or the B value to see how quickly our cycles occur or how slowly the cycles occur. So that's what we're looking at is the change in the period. Now B is going to be the coefficient to the X or in a lot of times this is theta. So it's the coefficient to the angle. So let's take a look at a few examples. So we're gonna try to graph y equals sine of theta, which is also an x, the unknown, the angle, divided by two. Okay, so what we have to think is, okay, what is b? Well, b is really just a fraction one half. So, because the angle's being multiplied by one half. Now to find the new period, what we're gonna do is take the period of, of sine, which is two pi, and we're gonna divide it by b. So I'm gonna take two pi divided by one half. Well, two pi divided by one half ends up being two pi times two, which ends up being four pi. So that's my full period now. So I'm gonna do one full cycle in four pi. So if I take this new period and I divide it by four, that will tell me what increments I need to label my x-axis as. So four pi divided by four is just pi. So that means my quarter points all the way through the graph are pi apart. So let's start by graphing, okay? We're gonna start on the y-axis with zero and then these are my quarter points and I'm gonna label those in increments of pi. So that's one pi, that's two pi, this one's three pi, and this one's four pi. And then that way I can get one full cycle in. Okay, sine starts at the origin at zero, zero. Okay, at the first quarter point, I'm gonna be at positive one. At the second quarter point, we hit the x-axis. At the third quarter point, I'm at negative one. And at the fourth quarter point, I'm back to the x-axis. So I'm gonna graph my sine curve. And I'm gonna throw an arrow on each end because it is a continuous function we are only graphing one period. And you can graph more or less or part of it, but that's how you would graph sine of theta over two or theta halves. Now, let's try a tangent graph. Okay, tangent's a little bit different because a tangent's normal period is only one pi. It only takes pi to get one full cycle. But you treat B the same, so you look at the coefficient to the angle and B is three. So our new period is going to be one pi or pi divided by three. Well, that's just one third. That's a very tiny cycle. So that means my full cycle of tangent, which kind of looks like this, will be occur in pi thirds. So if I label my axis zero and I label this pi thirds, that's the beginning and that's the ending of a full cycle. Now to get my quarter points, I'm gonna take pi thirds divided by four, which is times one fourth, and that's gonna give me pi twelfths. So that's what I'm gonna label along that x-axis. So my first point is pi twelfths. My second point is two pi twelfths, which is really pi six. And then three pi twelfths, that's really pi fourths if I reduce it. And then four pi twelfths, that's pi thirds. So there, there are my quarter points. Now you need to know a little something about the parent graph, but I'm gonna draw one cycle and I'm just gonna do one full period. And I know in the middle of my period, I have an asymptote. So I'm gonna draw my asymptote halfway, which is pi sixth. And then I'm gonna graph from the origin, my first quarter point, I always hit a positive one. And so my curve's going up and approaching the asymptote. And then at pi thirds, I'm at zero. And at the next quarter point, I'm at negative one. And I'm gonna just graph my tangent towards the asymptote. Uh, they're a little curvier in there, but we get the general shape 
of the tangent graph and most importantly we get the length of one period. Now some people teach it where you would go ahead and draw a full cycle so you can go back to negative pi twelfths and negative pi six. Draw your other asymptote at negative pi six and you can get a full cycle that way also. So if I just can took this and says splitting it into two parts, I put my quarter point right here at negative one. I could see the graph going down and going approaching that asymptote um, where x is equal to negative pi six. So that's generally what this tangent graph looks like. Now let's look at a cosine graph. Okay. Now cosine is like sine in that the period is two pi. So we're going to go ahead and identify b, and b is that coefficient, so b is 4. So I'm going to take 2 pi divided by 4, and that means my full period is pi halves. So that means one full cycle is going to happen in pi halves. That's a very tight cycle. So I'm going to label 0 as my starting point, and the end of a cycle is pi halves. Now I can take pi halves to find my intervals and divide them into four. So I'm going to divide this by four, which is multiplying by one fourth. So that gives me pi eighths. So I'm going to count in eighths. So this is going to be a pi eighths. The next one is two pi eighths, which is pi fourths. The next one is three pi eighths. And then the last one would be 4 pi 8, which we know is pi halves. Now, cosine's parent graph starts at 1, oscillates to negative 1. So we're going to start at positive 1. The first quarter point hits the x-axis. The th second quarter point is our minimum, and then back to the x-axis. And then we finish the cycle at pi halves. So let's draw our curve. Boom, boom. And boom, there we go. Now we know this turns and cycles back down. I should make this a little more curved because we know that cycles. But you've, we've drawn one full period of cosine of 4x. Now a couple little hints about b. The other way you can think about b besides figuring out the length of a period, you can take this coefficient and say, okay, there are four cosine cycles in a typical period. So our period is 2 pi. So if I drew this from 0 to 2 pi, what this 4 means is I would have 4 cycles. So let's go back and think about that. So with tangent, its period is pi. So if I drew this whole curve from 0 all the way to pi, I would actually have 3 full tangent curves. And then for sine, since b is a half, in 2 pi, you can see I only have half of my cur full curve drawn. So that's another way to kind of think about b. You can go ahead and figure out the length of the period, but think about b as being the number of cycles you would have in a regular period. I don't know if that's helpful for you, but hopefully you can kind of see the concept. And you can play around with that. So there you go. That is how you graph a trig function using those curves.